Hello, my friends. Kurt Berglund with you. Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. We do all kinds of stuff on this channel. Book reviews, baseball sims, glory days boxing. And today, we've got a baseball sim for you that I am loving more every time I play it. It's called Fall Classic Baseball. And I'm so fired up about this game, I've started two, two, two replays with it. Uh, and this one today is the 1970 Chicago Cubs. We are up to uh, April 14th, 1970. It is the Cubs home opener against the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, the Cubs have just gotten home from a four-game road trip starting in Philadelphia and ending in Montreal. Their current record is two wins and two losses. Opening day is on my channel if you'd like to check it out. Uh, and this is home opener Opening day was in Philadelphia. Their home opener will be against Philadelphia at Wrigley Field today. Uh, the opposing pitchers are a pair of left-handers. For the Phillies, Chris Short, one of my all-time favorite pitchers, and not just because he knows his way around a buffet. No, not just because he's the poor man's Mickey Lolich. No, it, and not just because he spent a year with the Milwaukee Brewers. No, this guy could pitch, and everybody's forgotten about him. But he was a pitcher. Uh, so it's going to be Chris Short for the Phillies against left-hander Ken Holtzman for the Cubs, who many people remember more as a member of the Oakland A's, but Ken Holtzman threw a no-hitter with the Cubs, and was an excellent pitcher for Leo DeRocher's Cubs uh, before being dealt to Oakland. So, what we're going to do, we're going to use our two uh, D6s to get our rolls uh, to help to resolve the at-bats, and then we're going to be using a whole stack of fast-action cards, and I love the fast-action cards for Fall Classic Baseball. Make no mistake, fast action cards. Uh, and so we're going to be using those to tell us about base runners and defense and all that stuff. So with no further ado, let's get to the starting lineups for today's game. Philadelphia at Chicago, April 14th, 1970. For the visiting Philadelphia Phillies leading off at shortstop, it's Larry Boa batting second at second. These are as-played lineups, by the way. Uh, I'm making two adjustments to the Cubs roster. Milt Pappas, an early acquisition. I'm putting him on the, on the roster from day one. And Joe Pepitone was acquired during the season as well. I'm putting him on the roster from day one. But today, these lineups are as-played uh, for just as it works out that way. Denny Doyle will bat second for the Phillies, uh, play second base. Larry Heisel will bat third and play center field. Darren Johnson will bat fourth and play first base. Tony Taylor will bat fifth and play left field. Tim McCarver will bat sixth, he'll be the catcher. Don Money will bat seventh, he'll play third base. John Briggs bats eighth, he'll play right field. And Chris Short will be on the mound. Now, in 1970, Chris Short was 9-16 and 16 in 199 innings of work. He had 34 starts on the season. His endurance is 27 batters today before fatigue may become an issue for him. All right, for the Cubs, their actual lineup. Don Kessinger will lead off at shortstop. Glenn Beckert bats second at second base. Billy Williams bats third in left field. Ron Santo bats fourth at third base. Ernie Banks bats fifth. He'll play first base. Jim Hickman bats seventh. He'll play center field. Johnny Callison will bat seventh. He'll play right field. And Randy Hundley will bat eighth. He'll be behind the plate for the first time this season. On the mound, it's Ken Oltzman, 
Holtzman went 17 and 11 in 1970 in 38 starts and 288 innings of work. All right, so there we go. We're ready to start some fall classic baseball. And we'll do it just like this. All right, so we're rolling our 2D6s. We'll read the black die first, the white die second, and then we'll pull over the fast action cards as needed. And we are underway with a 45 on Larry Boa. That's nothing. Oh, we got to do our pitcher ratings, don't we? See what kind of stuff they've got. So this will be for Holtzman. For Ken Holtzman, he has an A rating for today. He's got A stuff. And Chris Short will have A stuff as well. All right, so for the 45, we're looking on Holtzman's A column. That's going to be an out. And this will be hit to left field. Under it is Billy Williams, and he puts it away for out number one. We are underway at Wrigley Field in the sunshine. No lights at Wrigley in 1970. The pitch from Holtzman to... Denny Doyle, we draw a 16. That's going to be an out. It's hit on the ground to Glenn Beckert. He gloves it and throws to Ernie Banks for out number two. And now Larry Heisel. Pitch from Holtzman, 63. That's nothing there. That's going to be an out for Heisel. Ground ball, Ron Santo. To his left, he gloves it, he throws to Banks, and that'll retire Philadelphia in inning number one. So it's a one, two, three first inning for Ken Holtzman. We go to the bottom of the first. We're looking at Kessinger, William, uh, Beckert, and Williams. Leo DeRocher's sort of traditional first three in his order. The pitch from... Uh, Short to Kessinger is going to be a home run check. On a 65, that's minus 11, so it's not going to be a home run. It's to left. Tony Taylor near the track will make the catch for out number one. Glenn Becker. 15 is going to be a line drive snagged by Darren Johnson. Two outs. Nobody aboard for sweet swinging Billy Williams. The pitch from short is a walk one to four. No walk. So it's a ground ball Denny Doyle. To his left, he fields it. He throws to Johnson, and that will retire the Cubs in inning number one. At Wrigley, we've played one complete, and we have no score. Two Tough lefties with A stuff today. We'll see what happens. Darren Johnson, Tony Taylor, Tim McCarver, righty, righty, lefty. Holtzman winds and delivers. This is going to be ball four. Johnson draws a walk off the servings of Ken Holtzman. And with nobody out, it's Tony Taylor. Holtzman the stretch, checks Johnson at first, and the delivery is going to be corked to center and deep. This is going to get over Hickman's head. Is Johnson going to be able to hold? No, yeah, he's, they're not going to wave him. They are not going to wave him. They hold him up at third base. And it's runners at second and third on the double by Tony Taylor. So the Cubs have trouble in inning number two. They're going to play the infield at normal depth. Little early for Leo to be pulling the infield in. Holtzman the stretch. The pitch to McCarver. Is hit to right field. Under it is Johnny Callison. Tagging is Darren Johnson. The throw goes to third base and Johnson will score. On the sacrifice fly by Tim McCarver. It's 1-0 Philadelphia. Taylor holds at second. There's one out for Don Money. 
Holtzman the stretch and the delivery to money is a 64. That's nothing. That's going to be popped up. Foul territory. Randy Hundley with the bad knees throws away the mask and makes the catch. Two gone in the second. Taylor still at second base. And now Johnny Briggs, a lefty lefty matchup for Holtzman. The pitch is going to be trouble for Holtzman. This is extra bases in right center field. Going to bounce off the wall. Taylor scores easily. Around second is Briggs. He's heading for third. Callison's relay to Beckert. Beckert to Santo. Sliding Briggs. Not in time. A triple. For Johnny Briggs, it's 2-0 Philadelphia. And Chris Short comes to the plate with two outs. And the Phillies taking it to Ken Holtzman with his good stuff. The pitch to short is going to be trouble. No. Ground ball, Kessinger. He's up with it and throws to Banks, and that retires the Phillies. But they get two runs on two hits, and they leave one after an inning and a half. Philadelphia's got a 2 nothing lead. Ron Santo coming to the plate. Banks and then Hickman. Righty, righty, righty against Short. Cubs down 2 nothing. Bottom of the second. Short winds and deals. He walks him. Ronnie draws a walk. Here comes Banks. Two homers on the young season for Ernie Banks. The pitch from Short. Hey, struck him out. First strikeout for Chris. Santos stays at first and Hickman up. Pitch to Jim Hickman. Ground ball, Denny Doyle. He knocks it down. He picks it up. His only play at first. They retire Hickman by a step and Santo moves to second base with two outs now. It'll be Callison, a lefty-lefty matchup. The pitch from Short. Ground ball, Doyle. Denny gloves it and throws to Johnson, and that will retire the Cubs in inning number two. After two complete, it's 2-0 Philadelphia. All right, so top of the order for Philly... In the third, Boa, Doyle, Heisel. Holtzman winds and deals. And it's a comebacker, gloved by Kenny. He takes a couple steps toward Banks and flips him the ball for out number one. Cards and Dice TV, my good friend Tony Porter got me onto this game. Lots of tutorials on that channel for Fall Classic Baseball. Want to check out what it looks like. I recommend it. This game is all that and a bag of chips. Holtzman Wines and Deals. This is going to be a ballpark check for... Denny Doyle, he can't hit a home run. We're in the third inning. It's a 12. He's a left-handed batter, and it's a foul ball. Holtzman's next delivery to Doyle is a 56. Hey, struck him out. First strikeout for Holtzman. Got him on a changeup. Two outs and Heisel up now. Pitch to Larry. Fly ball, right field. John Callison toward the line is going to make the catch, and that will retire the side for the Phillies. Bottom of the third coming, and it's 2-0 Philadelphia. 
Hundley, Holtzman, and Kessinger. 8-9-1 for the Cubs. Pitch to Randy. Base hit. Banged up the middle. He's on with a single. That's going to bring up Holtzman. And I don't seem to have Kenny's card. <laughs> Here it is. All right. So Holtzman at the plate. He's a good bunter. He hit 200. There's a few options here. So, what are we going to do here? All right. Got it. Uh, the pitch from short to Holtzman, he squares to bunt. And that's not going to go well. That's just not happening. And I'm just going to double check, but I think we've got the worst of all possible outcomes coming here. Uh, it's popped up. It's gloved by McCarver. He's going to fire down to first to try and double up Hundley, but he gets back. So Holtzman pops up the bunt. Hundley scrambles back to first. They don't get the double play, but Holtzman does not advance the runner with one out. Now it's Kessinger. Short the stretch and the delivery. Ground ball, Doyle, to his right, knocks it down, picks it up, fires to Johnson, and they get Kessinger by a step as Hundley slides into second base. So he's in scoring position, bottom of the third for Beckert. Short the stretch and the delivery. Yeah, looper. And caught by Doyle, and that will retire the side. So we go to the fourth with your score. Philadelphia 2, Chicago nothing. Johnson, Taylor, and McCarver coming up. 4-5-6 for Philly in the top of the fourth. Holtzman seems to have righted the ship since... A rocky start, a rocky second inning at least. Darren Johnson up, Holtzman winds and deals. Fly ball, center field, but not deep. Jim Hickman can handle this one, and there's one gone. Tony Taylor is one for one. Pitch to Tony. Hey, struck him out. Two strikeouts now for Holtzman. Six in a row retired. Here comes McCarver. Holtzman winds and deals to the Phillies catcher. Center field. Jim Hickman in his tracks puts it away for out number three. We've played three and a half, and it's 2 nothing Phillies. Billy Williams. Ernie Banks, Jim Hickman, righty, righty, righty against the left-handed dealings of Chris Short in inning number four. The pitch to him, base hit, Williams right field. Johnny Briggs throws it back in, Santo up, he's the tying run now. Short the stretch, the pitch. Got a ballpark check. So, it's the fourth inning, we got a seven. And that's a foul ball, so we're gonna roll this one again. Next pitch to Santo from short is a dropping cards all over the place. 
Uh, here we go. And it's a comebacker, gloved by Chris Short. He turns and fires to Boa covering second. The relay to Johnson at first is in time for a rally killing, soul crushing 1 6 3 double play turn by the Phillies. And that'll bring up Banks with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. Nobody aboard. Short winds and delivers. Got a defense check. All right. So first we're going to see if he struck him out. He did not. And now the 53. We will check on a range. Got to the kitchen. Oh my God, I smell gas. It's a range, Jack. Uh, shortstop. Range for boy is a nine. And it's by him. Banks with a single. Ernie's aboard with two outs, and now it's Hickman, who had a career year in 1970. 32 bombs and a 315 average and 115 RBIs. I know people don't. It's not fashionable to like RBIs. I like RBIs. I'm that kind of guy. I go there. You give me 115 RBIs in a season, and I'm going to like it. Okay? That's how I roll. Yikes. All right. Hickman's 0 for 1. Short the stretch. Checks Banks. The pitch home is ball four. So two Cubs are on with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. Callison coming up. A two out hit here would be big. Short the stretch. The delivery. Hey, struck him out. Number two for short, and he picked a good time for it. After four complete, Phillies two, Cubs nothing. The only thing you got to watch now, short's endurance. He only goes 27 batters before fatigue can rear its ugly head. All right, Don Money, John Briggs, Chris Short. We got a lot of brewers here. Heisel, Darren Johnson, Don Money, Johnny Briggs, Chris Short. Five, count them, five Milwaukee Brewers in this lineup. All right, so Money's 0 for 1. Pitch to Don Money. Popped him up. Under it is Hundley. He throws away the mask and makes the catch for out number one. Johnny Briggs coming up. Holtzman winds and deals. Hey, struck him out. Number three. Briggs is gone. Nine up and nine down for Holtzman. Chris Short coming. Good candidate for... 10 up and 10 down with his 049 average. It's a crisp 049. The thing about short, he hit 049, but these were all <laughs> these were all rockets. Pitch from Holtzman. To short, he swings, it's grounded to banks. He's going to take it himself, and that will retire the side. We're halfway through this one. Halfway through with the score. Phillies 2, Cubs nothing. Bottom of the fifth coming. Short has not been flawless, but he's been good enough. We got Hundley, Holtzman, and Kessinger. 8-9-1 coming in the Cub fifth. And this could be trouble. Hundley, left field, deep. Tony Taylor in the well is going to make the catch for out number one. Now it's Holtzman. Chris Short winds and deals. Ground ball, Larry Boa. He throws to Darren Johnson, and there's two gone. Now it's Kessinger. Short winds and delivers. Base hit for Kessinger through the middle. 
He's one for three, and that'll bring up Beckert. Short, the stretch, checks Kessinger, the pitch home to Beckert. Ground ball, Bo, he's going to go the short way to Doyle, and that will retire the Cubs. We go to the six with your score. Philly, two, Chicago, nothing. Top of the order coming for Philadelphia. Boa, Doyle, and Heisel. They are a combined 0 for 6. All right, and your pitch to Larry Holtzman's fatigue hits 34. We're at 18 right now. The pitch to Boa is a bunt single for Boa. Santo just puts it in his pocket, and Boa's aboard with a hit. Now it's Doyle. Ah, uh, Leo's looking down at his bullpen, but Leo didn't start his bullpen in the sixth inning. So I'm going to pause for a moment here on that whole thing. Doyle at the plate, Holtzman the stretch, the delivery to Denny Doyle is going to be a base hit for Doyle to center field. Charging hard is Jim Hickman. He has a strong arm, so Boa will stop at second. There are two on now with nobody out. And Larry Heisel coming to the plate. Larry's 0 for 2. Cub infield at double plate up. Holtzman the stretch and the delivery to Heisel. Hit in the air to left. Under it, Billy Williams. He makes the catch for out number one. Darren Johnson 0 for 1. Holtzman the stretch. The delivery to Darren Johnson is a base hit. Darren Johnson with a base hit. To left field. Williams guns it into Santo. The bases will be loaded as they hold Boa at third. Cubs going to play the infield in at the corners. And at double play depth up the middle, Tony Taylor comes to the plate. And that is going to get action going in the Cubs bullpen. 10-8. And Hank Aguirre start to throw. Lefty righty, double barrel action, just the way I like it. All right. So Johnson is aboard. Taylor is up. So it's Bo at third, Doyle at second, Johnson at first, one man out. In at the corners, halfway up the middle. The pitch to Taylor from Holtzman is gonna be what to center field hickman under it boa tagging the throw comes in banks cuts it off doyle holds boa scores sacrifice fly for taylor 3 nothing Phillies. So now we've got Bo Doyle at second, Johnson at first, and two men out for McCarver. A lefty lefty matchup. Tim is 0 for 1. He did hit a sacrifice fly in the second inning. Pitch to McCarver is going to be corked to center. This is the sixth inning. Is Hickman going to get there? Yes, he is. And that will retire the side, but the Phillies do damage with another run on three hits. They leave two. And they almost blow the game open, but Hickman caught up to that one. After five and a half, Phillies three, Cubs nothing. 
The meat of the Cubs order coming up. It's Williams, Santo, and Banks in inning number six. Don't forget to subscribe to the Universal Baseball Association Lounge page on Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe to the Tabletop Sports page on Facebook. I post all my stuff there. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I put all my updates there as well. At Kurt Berglund 14. I'll put all this info in the description for this video. All right, so Cubs have some work to do. It's the bottom of the sixth. Billy Williams is one for two. Short wines and deals. Williams swings and hits it to left toward the line. Tony Taylor is on the run, and he makes the catch for out number one. Santo is 0 for 1. The pitch to Ron. To center, not deep. Larry Heisel there and makes the catch for out number two. Banks up. He's been hot. One for two today. Short winds and delivers. Ground ball. Don Money to his left. Gloves it. Plants. Fires to Johnson. And that'll retire the side in the sixth. We go to the seventh with your score. Phillies three. Cubs nothing. Bottom third of the Phillies order coming in the seventh. Money, Briggs, Short. Money is 0 for 2. Holtzman winds and deals. To center, but not deep. Hickman is there for out number one. Johnny Briggs is one for two. Lefty lefty matchup. Holtzman wines and deals. Ballpark check. Seventh inning, 20. We're going to need the fifty four chart. All right, and the 54 charts right here, the wildest section. Pop up, shallow center field. Under it is, is Beckert. He's got it. Oh. All right, so we're rolling a D6. If four, the second baseman's hurt. If it's a six, the shortstop is hurt. If it's a two, the center fielder is hurt. So we want to avoid, first thing here, Beckert makes the catch. There's two outs. Now we want to avoid even numbers, and we don't avoid the even numbers. Jim Hickman is injured. Jim Hickman is injured. Jim Hickman has been maimed. Jim Hickman has been maimed. Medical professionals are attending to him at this moment. He got leveled by Glenn Beckert. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to check Jim Hickman's injury level. All right. So, Where that would be is the question on America's mind at the moment. All right, so Hickman is a level one. 
He is injured for five big ball games. Hickman goes down, leveled by Beckert. He's not moving, bleeding profuse, <laughs> prof <laughs> profusely from the head. So Hickman is out five games. And they're going to haul him off on a, <laughs> a stretcher. <laughs> All right. So the new center fielder for the Cubs is going to be Cleo James. No, it's not. This is the perfect opportunity for Joe Pepitone. So Joe Pepitone puts down his hair dryer and he's about to make his Cubs debut. All right, so we've got a solution to the Jim Hickman crisis. And if I can make my fine motor skills work. Here he is. There's Joe Pepitone. So he's going into center field to take over for one Jim Hickman who was cruelly leveled by Glenn Beckert. All right. Well, that crisis is over. And it's Chris Short. Two outs, top of the seventh. Got to get back to some baseball here. We're done with the mash unit. The pitch to short. Hey, struck him out. And that's number four. And that retires the Phillies in the seventh. And since it's Jack Brickhouse and not Harry Carey, there won't be any singing during the seventh inning stretch. Bottom of the seventh coming. It's 3 nothing Phillies. And Joe Pepitone will lead off, then John Callison, then Randy Hundley. In the bottom of the seventh, we are cruising toward Chris Short's fatigue zone. And um, the complicating factor there, of course is that if he continues to throw a shutout, we ignore the fatigue. Bottom of the seventh, Pepitone, Callis, and Humley, six, seven, eight. The pitch from short is hit to right, but not deep. John Briggs toward the line is going to make the catch for out number one. Now it's Callison. Johnny is 0 for 2. 54 chart. 54 chart, where are you? All right. Bases are empty. And it's the seventh. It's a two. Fly ball, hit toward right. This is Johnny Briggs. He's on the run. He's got a long run. Is he going to get there? Briggs' error rating is a zero, and he does. Johnny Briggs with a nice running catch. Two gone in the seventh. And now it'll be Hundley. With Holtzman on deck, but they're going to have to hit for him if Hundley should reach. All right. Randy is... Randy Hundley is one for two. And this is to left and deep. Down the line is toward the foul pole. And base hit off the wall. Hundley can't run at all. He's around first. 
He's going to have to hold with a very, very, very long single as Tony Taylor gets the throwback in. Holtzman's due, but his day is done. And seven innings is what Leo's going to get out of him. <clears throat> so, we'll give you Holtzman's numbers in just a moment. Abernathy is throwing in the bullpen for the Cubs. He will be the new pitcher in the top of the eighth. But before we do that, we need a pinch hitter. And here comes Cleo James. He's going to do the pinch hitting honors for Holtzman. Hundley's at first. Two men are out. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Kessinger is now on deck. Holtzman goes seven innings. He allows five hits. He walked one. He struck out four. He allowed three runs. They're all earned. He's in line for the loss unless the Cubs rally. Short the stretch and the delivery to Cleo James is a 52. Let's see if he struck him out. He did not. 52 is a ground ball to Larry Boa. Larry Boa's error number is a three. He boots it. Clank off his glove. Hundley slides into second safely. And Cleo James is on first due to the E6 by Larry Boa. Two on now with two outs for Kessinger. Frank Lucchese has decided that this may be a good opportunity to get some action in the bullpen. So it's going to be Billy Wilson starting to throw for Philadelphia. A right-hander. Kessinger, if he reaches, Beckert. Kessinger's one for three. Hundley at second. Cleo James at first. Two men out. Bottom of the seventh. Cubs trail by three. How about one into the basket, Don? Short the stretch and the delivery is not going to be good. Line drive gloved by Doyle, and that will retire the Cubs in the seventh. They threaten but do not score, leaving two. After seven complete, Phillies three, Cubs nothing. We have a new Cubs pitcher coming on. He will bat in the number nine spot. His name Ted Abernathy, and he owes me 20 bucks. If anybody sees him, please remind him. Uh, it is, he will be in the eighth inning. He has a stuff. He is a right-hander, and his job is to hold the Phillies right where they are. Top of the order for Philadelphia, Boa, Doyle, and Heisel coming up in the eighth. All right. Larry is one for three. He has scored a run. Abernathy winds and deals. Base hit. Bowie's two for four. Now it's Doyle. Abernathy sets the delivery. Doyle squares to bunt. Hey, struck him out on... Bunting with two strikes. Doyle doesn't get it done, and Heisel comes to the plate. Larry's 0 for 3. The pitch from Abernathy is a 51. Let's see if he strikes him out. He does not. Pitcher. Error check. For Abernathy, he is a 0. It's odd. Abernathy turns, fires to Kessinger at second. The relay to Banks is in time for a rally-killing, soul-crushing 163. 
double play turn by the Cubs. All right, so bottom of the eighth coming, short back out, his left arm about a foot longer than his right arm at this point. Going to be Beckert, Williams, and Santo in the bottom of the eighth. Billy Williams is standing hands on hips on the mound in the bullpen. Three nothing Phillies, bottom of the eighth. The pitch to Beckert, who is 0 for 3. Short winds and deals. Base hit, Beckert. He bangs it to left. Tony Taylor collects it and throws it back in. More action coming in the Phillies bullpen now. It's going to be... Who's it going to be? Joe Horner, left-hander, starting to throw. Horner and Wilson, lefty-righty, double-barreled action, just the way I like it. Billy Williams is up. Beckert at first. Short the stretch, and the delivery is going to be not good. Line drive right at short. Where is Beckert going? Short turns and flips to Darren Johnson for the double play. It's a rally-killing, soul-crushing line drive double play, and the Cubs just ran themselves out of an inning. Now it's Santo, 0 for 2. Short winds and delivers. Cork to left. Going to get over Taylor's head. Of course it is. And one hop the wall. Santo around first. He's heading to second. And he's in scoring position with two outs. But the Cubs have left. Two, four, five, six, seven runners. Yikes. Banks is one for three. Here he comes. Might be Short's last hitter. Pepitone on deck. Pitch to Ernie. Ah, uh, 65. Cork to left and deep. This is back. This is caught by Taylor near the wall. After eight complete. Phillies three. Cubs nothing. Kind of been how the first four games have gone. Just not consistent play by the Cubs. All right, so it's Abernathy back out for his second inning of work. Darren Johnson, Tony Taylor. And Tim McCarver, righty, righty, lefty. Against the submarining stylings of Ted Abernathy. The pitch to Darren Johnson is a 52. Let's see if he struck him out. No, he didn't. Hit to left, Billy Williams. We're going to do his error rating. It's going to be a 1. And he makes the catch for out number 1. Johnson retired. Here comes Taylor, one for two. McCarver on deck, 0 for two, the pit. Hey, struck him out, two gone. Second strikeout for Abernathy, and here comes McCarver. McCarver, 0 for two, the pitch to him. Maybe he dotted him. Comes inside, he hit him. McCarver with a long look out at Abernathy. He's not happy. But it didn't hurt because it's Ted Abernathy. So give me a break, Tim. Go down to first. Now it's money. 0 for 3. The pitch to Don Money. Base hit off of Abernathy. Where's it going? Center field. McCarver holds at second. Two on, and Briggs comes to the plate. 
And that's going to be it for McCarver. I'm sorry, that's going to be it for Abernathy. Here comes Leo, and he wants Hank Aguirre for a lefty-lefty matchup. So McCar Abernathy's done after an inning and two-thirds. He allows two hits. He hit a batter and struck out two. Hank Aguirre will come in and bat in the nine spot. And we'll have to see what kind of stuff Hank has today. Uh, he has B stuff. And he's on to face Briggs. Now, Briggs is a left-handed batter, and they might hit for him. To go after one more insurance run, he's one for three in the game so far. Now they're going to let him bat. Lefty-lefty matchup for a Gary. Two outs, two on. McCarver at second, money at first to Gary the stretch. And the delivery. Hey, struck him out. And that will retire the Phillies in the ninth. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Do or die. Phillies three, Cubs nothing. Short, his arm a good two feet longer than his right. Uh, pitching to Pepitone, Callison, and Hundley in the bottom of the ninth. Lefty, lefty, righty. Pepitone is 0 for 1. He came on for Hickman after Hickman's maiming back in the seventh inning. Short winds and deals to Pepitone, and he hits it to center. Got a chance to get out of here. Heisel off the wall. Pepitone around first. He's heading to second. He's got a leadoff double. Well, there's a start for the Cubs. Now it's going to be Callison. Chris Short has not been flawless. He's, all, he's scattered eight hits. He hasn't, he's walked two, and nobody has crossed the pay station. Short the stretch. The pitch to Callison is a ballpark check. There's our ballpark. Here's the check. 13. Foul ball. Callison gets another life. He got a piece of it. Short the stretch. The delivery to Callison is ball four. Tying run going to come to the plate. Two on with nobody out and Hundley coming up for the Cubs. The problem, Randy Hundley is a walking double play candidate. So if Short can get him to hit it on the ground, Lucchese is sticking with Short for the time being. Standing in the on-deck circle comes a pinch hitter for the Cubs. And that will be Paul Popovich to bat for a Gary. Nobody out, bottom of the ninth. Pepitone at second, Callison at first, short on fumes. Dice on, <laughs> on the floor. All right. Hundley's two for three. Short the stretch and the delivery to him. This is going to be maybe trouble to left and deep. Way back. Got a chance on the ballpark. Card gone. Hundley to left. Hits a three-run bomb, and we're tied in the bottom of the ninth. Lucchese left him in. One batter too long. 
his left arm now three feet longer than his right arm, and he can't get the win. We got a tie game at three, and the Cubs are mobbing Randy Hundley. Yikes. A 3-3 three, three bolt. All right, so Popovich comes to the plate now for a Gary and starting to throw in the Cubs bullpen is Phil Regan. Reagan, Regan, Reagan, Regan, whatever. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Phil is throwing in the bullpen. All right, Popovich will bat here with nobody out in the bottom of the ninth. Now, any old kind of a run walks it off for the Cubs. Short's day is done as Lucchese comes out a batter too late. And it's going to be Billy Wilson. Billy Wilson, 37 games, 58 innings. Not impressive. And, but nobody is really in the Phillies' bullpen, so. Another future brewer, by the way, if you're scoring at home. Let's see what kind of stuff Billy's got today. He has A stuff. 3-3 three, three ball game, bottom of the ninth. Popovich at the plate, batting left. He's a switch hitter. Wilson winds, Kessinger on deck. Wilson winds and deals to the pinch hitter. Base hit for Popovich. A pinch hit single for the Cubs infielder, and now it's Kessinger. Well, Leo DeRocher flashing all sorts of signs. Wilson, the stretch, Tex Popovich, the pitch home, Kessinger squares to bunt. Kessinger gets it down. Gloved by Johnson, he turns and flips to Denny Doyle, and that moves Popovich to second base. Now it's Beckert. Now it's Glenn Beckert on deck is uh, Billy is uh, Billy Williams and Leo DeRocher is looking for any kind of a pinch runner that he can possibly get his hands on and it's going to be Willie Smith. Now that Popovich is at second base, Willie Smith, who's fast, is going to run for him. And Kessinger will have a chance to be the hero. Jim Hickman laying in the infirmary. Beckert with a chance to win the game. Williams on deck. Smith at second. One out. Beckert's one for four. Wilson, the stretch, and the delivery to Glenn Beckert to center field. Under it is Heisel. Got to check his arm. Tagging is Willie Smith. And he bluffs and goes back to second. Heisel's strong throw to third. And there's two outs. Now it's Billy Williams with a chance to win the game. First base is open. Santo is on deck. They could walk him and go after the platoon advantage, and they're going to do just that. So Billy Williams will be intentionally walked. And Santo gets his chance to be the hero. On second base is Willie Smith. On first base, doesn't matter. It's Billy Williams. Bottom of the ninth, Ron Santo. We're tied at three. Wilson the stretch. 
And the delivery to Santo. Hey, struck him out, and we're going to have an extra inning ball game today. But a three-run ninth featuring a Randy Hundley three-run bomb. Ties the ball game and sends us to extra innings today. Regan will take over the pitching duties for the Cubs, and he will bat ninth. The pitcher spot is due first in the Phillies' 10th. So we're going to see a pinch hitter for Billy Wilson. And I got cards everywhere. All right, so pinch hitting will be outfielder. Oscar Gamble. Who is, of course, a former Cub. In 69, Gamble was a Cub. Right now, Gamble will pinch it for Wilson and to lead off the 10th inning against Phil Regan. Reagan, Regan, Reagan. All right. Five and nine was Reagan in 70 with 12 saves. Top of the 10th, Gamble leads off, then Boa, then Doyle. Lefty switch, lefty for the Phillies. 3-3 three, three game, top of the 10th. Here we go. The pitch from Reagan is grounded to Banks. He's going to take it unassisted, and there's one gone. Now it's Boa. Larry's two for four. He scored a run. The delivery. Oh, I didn't check uh, Reagan's uh, stuff. He's got B stuff. And Doyle hits it to left, but not deep. Billy Williams under it, and there's two gone. And now Doyle, two outs in the 10th. Cubs looking to come back at home on their home opener. The pitch to right toward the line. On the run is Callison, and he's got it for out number three. A one, two, three, tenth. We go to the bottom of the 10th. We're going to get a new Phillies pitcher going to be their closer, Joe Horner. He is a left-hander, and he will bat in the number nine spot. All right, so Gamble's done. Banks, Pepitone, Callison, righty, lefty, lefty in the bottom of the tenth for the Cub. For the Cubs, any old kind of a run is going to win it for Chicago. Opening day, nineteen seventy, April fourteenth. Jim Hickman in the hospital. All right, Ernie Banks. One for four. The pitch from Horner. Ground ball. Tapped in front of the plate. Tim McCarver's on it. Takes a couple steps to give himself an angle and fires to Darren Johnson for out number one. Here's Pepitone. 
Pepe is one for two, double the lead off the dramatic ninth inning. Horner to Pepitone. To right field and deep, back goes Briggs. Warning track, but no further, two gone. Now Callison. Horner winds and delivers to the Cubs right fielder. <clears throat> Excuse me, right fielder, ground ball, Darren Johnson. He's going to take it himself, and that will end the Cubs' 10th. We go to the 11th with your score, Philadelphia 3, Chicago 3. Regan will pitch to Heisel, Johnson, and Taylor. Righty, righty, righty in the Phillies' 11th. Larry is 0 for 4. The pitch to him. Ground ball. Santo to his left. Gloves it. Fires to Banks. And there's one gone. Now it's Johnson. One out in the 11th. Johnson's 1 for 3. The pitch to him. Is ball 4. He takes his base. One out, one on now for Tony Taylor, who's one for three. Doubled way back in the second. Regan, the stretch, the delivery to Tony Taylor. Ground ball, Banks. He turns and fires to Kessinger at second. The relay is not in time. They do not double up Tony Taylor. Johnson has retired 3-6 on the fielder's choice. Taylor is safe at first. And now it's McCarver at the plate. 0 for 2 for Tim. He got dotted in the ninth because he lipped off to Abernathy. You don't lip off to Ted Abernathy and not pay the price. <laughs> All right. Pitch to McCarver with Taylor at first. Base hit for McCarver. Where does it go? Right field. Drops in front of Callison. I think I know what kind of gun Callison's got, but I got to check it. Oh, it's, it's only average. Uh, yes, he's going to go to third. Taylor goes to third, so there's Phillies at the corners with two outs in the 11th. Money comes to the plate. He's one for four. Taylor at third. McCarver at first. Two gone in the 11th. Money one for four. The pitch. Oh, boy. 54 chart. 54 chart. All right. So there are men on base. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a wild pitch check, but there's no wild pitch. Hundley blocks it, and that's huge because it keeps the run from scoring. Yikes. All right. So money, ahead in the count, 1-0, and oh, two outs, top of the 11th, Taylor at third, McCarver at first, oh my god, 53, 53, let's see if he strikes him out, 1-2 to two and he gets him, no, 53, we'll check Banks, Banks range rating is a 5, oh my god. It's by him. It's by Banks for a base hit. 
It's off his glove. It rolls toward Beckert. Home comes Taylor. It's 4-3. An RBI infield single for money, and the Phillies lead 4-3 in the 11th. Now it's Briggs. Starting to throw in the Cubs' bullpen will be... Jim Colborn. Briggs at the plate with two on and two out. McCarver at second, Money at first. Regan the stretch and the delivery to center field. Under it is Pepitone, and he puts it away for out number three, but the Phillies score a run in the 11th. On two hits, they leave two. We go to the bottom of the 11th. Do or die time again for the Cubs. It's Joe Horner back out. And it'll be Randy Hundley, the hero of the ninth inning, to lead off in the bottom of the 11th. Then a pinch hitter for Regan, then Kessinger, 8-9-1 in the Cubs order, bottom of the 11th. They need a run to keep it going. They need two to walk it off. Hundley is three for four. The Cubs bench, in case you're wondering, and I am, has the following individuals left on it. Ken Rudolph and J.C. Martin, a couple of backup catchers. Yikes. All right. Hundley. Horner winds and deals, and it's a 53. Let's see if he strikes him out. Horner's a three, so he's got A stuff. Strikeout? No. 53. Center field. Heisel coming on. He is a range of seven. And he can't get there. It's a base hit for Randy Hundley. And bad knees and all. He hobbles down to first base. Now it'll be a pinch hitter for Regan. And that's going to be Ken Rudolph. Right-handed hitting backup catcher will pinch hit for Regan. Oh, boy. All right. So, bottom of the 11th. Hundley at first. They are going to run for Hundley because he's slower than dirt. And it's going to be Bill Hands to run for him. Bill Hands has average speed, but that's about four steps quicker than Randy Hundley. So Hands will pinch run. In the 11th. Leo DeRocher pulling out all the stops to get this win. Horner the stretch, the delivery. Rudolph squares to bunt. He gets it down. Gloved by Don Money. He goes to Doyle with it covering first. And the sacrifice moves hands to second base. Now it's Kessinger. Kessinger is one for four. He has bunted successfully. Hands is the man that means everything right now. Horner the stretch. Checks hands at second. The pitch home to Kessinger is to left field, but it's not going to get out of here. Tony Taylor makes the catch, and that retires the Cubs shortstop in its last chance saloon now. It's Glenn Beckert. One for five with 
Billy Williams on deck. So, Beckert, chance to tie the game. Horner, the stretch, checks hands a second. The delivery home is going to be a base hit for Glenn Beckert. It's going to be a base hit for Glenn Beckert. It drops in front of Heisel, scoring his hands, and we're tied at four. Yikes. The Cubs fans going nuts. Beckert with a clutch. Two out. Run scoring single. And it's four to four. Now it's Billy Williams. The Phillies bullpen is going to get busy. This game isn't over. Warming up in the bullpen is Dick Selma. Williams up. Beckert at first. Lefty-lefty matchup. Horner starting to run out of gas. Williams is one for four. He was intentionally walked in the ninth. The score is 4-4. Four, four. We're in the bottom of the 11th. If Beckert scores, the Cubs walk it off. The pitch to Williams, 54 chart. All right. So we have a wild pitch check. Not a wild pitch. All right, so next pitch to Williams. 43, Williams hits it to center. Heisel on the run, Heisel's gonna get there and we're gonna play 12 innings. The Cubs with a run in the bottom of the 12th keep themselves alive on opening day at home. All right, now we've got some accounting to do. Ken Rudolph is going to be the new catcher for the Cubs. Hands scored the, the tying run for Hundley. Rudolph takes over behind the plate. The new Cubs pitcher will bat in the eighth spot, and his name is Jim Colborn. Tell you about him in just a moment, but first, uh, let's tell you about Regan. who was going to be the loser, but the Cubs tied the game, so he's off the hook. Colborn, one and, three and one, with four saves in 34 games. Five of them starts in 1970. All right. So... Regan went two innings, allowed two hits. He walked one. He didn't strike out anybody. He allowed one run. It was earned. All right. Now, Briggs made the last out, so we're going to have a pinch hitter for Horner to lead off inning number 12 for Philadelphia. Their pinch hitter... will be Ron Stone. He is an outfielder, first baseman, and a left-handed batter. He's going to bat for Horner. He hit 262 in 1970. The new pitcher for the Phillies warming up in the bullpen will be Dick Selma. I'll tell you about him in a few minutes. 
Joe Horner's day is done. He went two innings, two hits, no walks, no strikeouts, but allowed the tying run in the bottom of the 11th. He cannot figure in the decision. Ron Stone will lead off the 12th. Winding and dealing is Colborn. Oh, first we got to figure out what kind of stuff Jim's got. He has A stuff. All right, and it's 14. The pitch to Stone. Hit on the ground to Glenn Beckert, the hero of the 11th inning. And he throws to first and retires Stone. Now it's Boa. Boa is two for five. The pitch from Colborn is a 52. Let's see if he strikes him out. He struck him out. Two gone in the Phillies' 11th. Now it's Doyle. One for five for Denny. Pitch from Colborn. Line drive, Callison coming on and makes a nice running catch that'll retire the side in the 12th in one, two, three fashion. We go to the bottom of the 12th chance for the Cubs to win it. It's a 4-4 tie ball game. Opening day at home, April 14th, 1970. Dick Selma's on. He was 8-9 with 22 saves. In 1970, he will bat in the number nine spot. Let's see what kind of stuff Dick Selma has. He has B stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he doesn't. He has C stuff. Good news for the Cubs. Billy Williams comes up. Then Santo. Then, I'm sorry, not Williams. Williams made the last out. It's Santo, Banks, and Pepitone. Righty, righty, lefty against Selma. Santo, one for four. The pitch to Dick Selma, or from Dick Selma. Hey, struck him out. One gone in the Cubs' 12th. Now it's Banks. Ernie, one for five. The pitch from Selma. 54 chart. Bases are empty. It's to center, Larry Heisel. His error number is a four. He makes the catch and there's two down. Pepitone up, bottom of the 12th. He is one for three since coming on for the maimed Jim Hickman. Selma winds and delivers a 56. Hey, struck him out. We're going to the 13th. We're going to the 13th inning with your score. Philadelphia 4, Chicago 4. All right, so... Heisel, Johnson, and Taylor against Colborn here in the 13th. Starting to get a little bit dark here at Wrigley without lights, so I don't know how much further we're going to be able to go. Top of the 14th, Heisel, Johnson, Taylor, righty, 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 against Colborn. And Jim is beginning his second inning of work. Heisel 0 for 5. The pitch, the score is tied at 4. This is to left, but not going to get there. Under it is Billy Williams. And there's one gone. Darren Johnson 1 for 3 with a pair of walks. Comes to the plate. Ground ball, Ron Santo gloves it and throws to Banks for out number two. 
Here's Tony Taylor coming. One for five. One for four with a sack fly, pair of runs scored, double. Had a good game. Played a made a bunch of catches. Two outs, nobody on. Colborne wines and deals to Tony Taylor. Walk one. Hey, struck him out. Number two strikeout for Colborne. And the Phillies are retired in the, thir in the 13th. We go to the bottom of the 13th now. With your score, Philadelphia 4, Chicago 4. Dick Selma back out for inning number 2. He will face Callison, a pinch hitter for Colborne, and there's really only one left, and that's J.C. Martin. And then, Ken Rudolph. All right, so first it's Callison against Selma. Selma is a C pitcher today. Callison is 0 for 4. The pitch to Johnny is a third. Hey, struck him out. Selma with the broccoli cauliflower medley. Gas. Colborne's two innings are done. And we're going to see a pinch hitter for him. It's going to be former Met J.C. Martin, the last position player available to Leo DeRocher today. Starting to throw in the Cubs bullpen is Roberto Rodriguez. And so is Joe Decker. Rodriguez and Decker are throwing in the Cubs bullpen. J.C. Martin ready to pinch hit for Colborn. On deck is Ken Rudolph. Selma winds and delivers to J.C. Martin. This is hit to right and deep. Is it going to get out of here? Caught by Briggs. There's two down in the 13th. Ken Rudolph comes to the plate. Selma winds and deals to Rudolph. It's a 52. Does he strike him out? Hey, struck him out. That ends the Cubs 13th. We're going 14 on opening day. And we've just about run out of space on the scorecard, but not quite. We go to the 14th. Umpires say they can keep playing, not too dark. And J.C. Martin will be the new catcher. He's going to take over the catching duties for Ken Rudolph. The new pitcher for Chicago will be Roberto Rodriguez. And he will bat in the number nine spot where Rudolph was. Decker continues to throw in the Cubs bullpen. Rodriguez stuff is B stuff. He's got B stuff today. And he will take over and face Tim McCarver. Uh, here we go. McCarver, Money, and Briggs. Lefty, righty, lefty in the Phillies' 14th inning. Here's our 14th. Rodriguez winds and delivers. He is a B. It's a 46. We have a ballpark check. McCarver on a 14. Foul ball. Next delivery from Rodriguez to McCarver. Does he hit him? No. Ground ball, Beckert. He gloves it and throws to Banks for out number one. Jim Hickman was maimed in the seventh inning. 
but has returned to the dugout bleeding profusely from the head. But cheering on the Cubs, Don Money is two for five. Roberto Rodriguez winds and deals. Base hit for Money. The lead run is aboard, and here comes Johnny Briggs. Leo DeRocher watching carefully from the dugout. Briggs is one for five. The pitch to him is hit to center. Under it is Pepitone, and he makes the catch for out number two. Dick Selma is due, and Dick Selma will not bat. We're going to see a pinch hitter for him, and so we're going to have a new Phillies pitcher in the bottom of inning number 14. That will be that will be Lowell Palmer a right-hander who has started to throw in the Phillies' bullpen. Meanwhile, the pinch hitter for Dick Selma is going to be Rick Joseph, a corner infielder, right-handed batter, and he will pinch hit here in the 14th. Oop. Nope. Okay, so with money at first, Rick Joseph will bat for Selma. Selma ends his day, two innings, three strike, four strikeouts, no walks, no hits, no runs. So Joseph against Rodriguez. The stretch, he checks money at first, Rodriguez delivers. And Rick Joseph hits it to center. Pepitone toward left center is going to put it away for out number three, and we're going to go to the bottom of the 14th. Lowell Palmer will take the mound for Philadelphia. He was 1-2 and two with no saves. He had starts and relief appearances. In the 1970 season, he started five games. He relieved in 33. Palmer will bat in the nine spot in the order. And what kind of stuff does he have? He has A stuff. All right. So it's going to be the top of the order. Kessinger, Beckert, and Williams for the Cubs in the bottom of the 14th. And it's getting dark. Are the umpires going to call a halt to the proceedings? Are we going to have a suspended game? Palmer winds and delivers to Kessinger. Base hit for Kessinger. It might be trouble. It will not be. Knocked down by Briggs. He keeps it in front of him. It's dark out there, folks. And Beckert comes to the plate with nobody out. Kessinger at first. Kessinger at first. And Lowell Palmer's already got some trouble. All right. Now Leo DeRocher is flashing a series of signs to third base coach Pete Reeser. And it terrifies me that I know that. All right. Lowell Palmer, the stretch and the delivery. There goes Kessinger. And it's a hit and run. Ah, 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 ah. All right, A, hit and run. A 
ground ball hit to Darren Johnson. Kessinger's on the run. Johnson's only play is to first base. He takes it himself, and Kessinger's in scoring position with one out. Now it's Billy Williams. Santo on deck. Cubs with a chance to walk this off in the bottom of the 14th on opening day. Lowell Palmer in trouble. They can walk Williams again and get to Santo. And they're going to do it. They're going to walk Billy Williams and pitch to Ron Santo. So there's two on now. Double play is set up. Santo at the plate. Santo's chance to be a hero. Second intentional walk for Billy Williams. They did it in the ninth inning as well. Santo is one for five. On second is Kessinger. He's the only runner that matters. Williams is at first. Kessinger has average speed. Lowell Palmer, the stretch, and the delivery is going to be way back to left field. Did he get enough of it? Way back. It's gone. A three-run bomb at the bottom of the 14th for Santo. It's a walk-off bomb on opening day. Bottom of the 14th. Ron Santo got intentionally or was pitched to after Williams was intentionally walked and he just took Lowell Palmer out of here. Yikes. Cub fans going nuts. It's a 7-4 Cub victory in the bottom of the 14th in the darkness. Holy smokes. Line scores. This is going to take a while for the victorious Cubs. One, two, three. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hits. 7 runs on 14 hits. And they committed no errors. The Phillies, 4 runs. 9, 10 hits. And they committed... I don't think anyone committed any errors. Nope, nope, one. There's one error on Boa. The losing pitcher was Lowell Palmer. The winning pitcher is Rodriguez, Roberto Rodriguez, who goes to 1-0 and on the season. Wow. Well, thank you for being with me, my friends. This was certainly worth it. Holy cow. 7-4 walk-off three-run bomb by Santo to win it in the bottom of the 14th. Fall Classic Baseball, my friends. It's a blast. Have a great day. So long, everybody.